So today's episode on Reawakening, I want to talk about Mark 10. You know, I'm just going to continue to go through the Mark series. This isn't supposed to be an exciting series. This this is to feed you. you know, I don't do glitz and glamour. I do hardcore Bible. So, um, Mark 10. Then he arose from there, and he came to the region of Judah, Judea, by the other side of the Jordan, and the multitudes gathered to him again, and he, he was accustomed, and he taught them again. The, the Pharisees came and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife, testing him? And he answered and said to them, did, What did Moses command you? They said Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and to dismiss her. And Jesus answered and said to them, Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote to you this precept. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. In the house, his disciples also asked him again about the same matter. So he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. So then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such the kingdom of God. So, as surely I said to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child by uh, will no, by no um, means enter it. And he took them up in his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And so Jesus said to them, Why do you call me good? No one, no one is good but one that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your mother and father. And he said to them, Teacher, I have kept all these things from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way and sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come and take up the cross and follow me. So, But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his word. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those to trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? Uh, but Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to, to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or wife or children or lands for my sake in the gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold in his time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last and last will be first. Now they were on the road going up to Jerusalem and Jesus was going before them and they were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid. Then he took up the twelve aside and began to tell them that the things that would happen. Behold, we are going to go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief, chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. They will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. 
Then James and John, then sons of Zebedee, came to, to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do, to do for us whatever we ask. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Grant us that we may sit on your right hand and the other on your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, We are able. So Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink that cup that I drink with the baptism that I am baptized, and you will be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and my left is not mine to give, but it is for those who I'm, uh, it is prepared. And when the ten heard this, they began to uh, be greatly displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to have become great among you shall be your servant, and whoever of your desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to, to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for ma many. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, uh, blind uh, Bartimaeus, the son of uh, Timaeus, sat by the, the road begging, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many warned them to be quiet, but he cried out more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. They called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to them, What do you want for, for me to do? So the blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. So here we go. I'm going to unpack this. There's a lot there. So I'm going to try to do the events in order. So Jesus goes to the region of Judea by the other side of the Jordan, and the multitudes gathered to him and taught them. Then the Pharisees tried cornering Jesus and asked Jesus if it was lawful to get divorced. And Jesus asked him a question back. You know, what did Moses command you to? You know, it's just a brilliant way to, of putting it. Because sometimes, you know, if somebody gives you a tough spot, you ask them a question back. You challenge them with a the question. So, because the Pharisees were trying to trap Jesus. They're, they don't want a real answer. If, if they wanted a real answer, Jesus would have given it to them. That's his character. So, the Pharisees sta stated Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and to dismiss, dismiss her. Then, four... Uh, fourth point, Jesus states, It's because of the hardness of your hearts, but marriage was designed for two to become one flesh. Let no man rip apart. Then, in the house of the disciples, they ask him about the same matter that whoever divorces his wife and married another and commits adultery, and if a woman divorces a man, remarries another and commits adultery. So, that was his answer was if you um if you unless the part you know the marital partner commits adultery with somebody else you're not free to remarry jesus was quite clear and i don't consider like death if if the partner of um you know spouse dies i don't consider that a remarriage it's a covenant fulfilled because it's over then they uh, brought little children to Jesus, and the disciples rebuked them. Then Jesus was angry and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not for forbid them. And whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will not enter it. So, then here comes 
the rich young ruler, and asked Jesus, What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Then Jesus says, Why do you call me good? There is no other, there's no one good other than God. So Jesus says that, and because Jesus wasn't saying that he wasn't good. He was testing him on the definition of what good was. Then he goes through, then here comes Jesus going through the commandments. And the rich wrong ruler says, I kept all of these commandments. Then Jesus said, so you then go ahead and sell everything you'll have treasure in heaven and take up your cross daily and follow me. So he, then he walked away from Jesus because he was rich. Poor man's probably in hell right now, which is awful. Then Jesus said to his disciples how hard it was to enter the kingdom of God for those that are rich. And he, then he gives a parable how hard it is, it is for those who trust in riches. So it's easier to go through the, um, a camel to go through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Then they ask Jesus who can be saved. Then Jesus just answers, with God all things are possible. So then Peter says that, that we have left all and followed Jesus. When Jesus says leave your family behind for his sake, it means to put him over your family. So now that they were on the road going to Jerusalem, they were amazed. And then they were afraid. Then Jesus told them he was going to be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes. And they would be, condemn him to death and deliver him. And then he would rise again. And James and John asked Jesus, what you want us to do? Then Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? They said, may one of us sit on the, on the right hand and the other on the left in glory. And Jesus said to them that you do not know what you're, you ask. And he said that you drink the cup that I drank and be baptized with the baptism that he is baptized with. And they agreed with Jesus and that he was. Then they were told that you will indeed sit in the right hand of Jesus. So these other ten disciples were angry at Jesus. And Jesus reminded them that they are here to be served. Or that they are here to serve. So then that's, I'm sorry, I mis mispronounced that then. Jesus then goes to Jericho, then heals a man who is blind. So that's Mark 10 in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed that content today. And, you know, right now is if you, you know, guys, I love you. And today I love you so much. I'm sharing you this. If you don't know Jesus, you get to know Jesus. Today we all struggle with our sin. We all have problems all sin and fall short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. Whether it's adultery, whether it's you know being angry to murder, whether it's stealing, whether it's all these different things. And if you really believe that your actions your actions are bad but your heart's okay, but if you do any everything that's ever came to your brain, I mean, how many times you, how many years would you spend in prison? Or you wouldn't even spend any time in prison. You'd be stoned. You'd be a puddle. As we would all be puddles. That's the bad news. I'm not just saying we deserve to go to hell. We deserve to go to hell in a handbasket. To hell plus. I mean, we deserve to go there. We deserve to be buried in there. And, you know, so that's... The bad news but the good news is jesus died for your sins he died he t he went to the cross so you can live again so if you repent you put your trust in jesus he'll save you from your sins because your sins will choke you to death and guys i love you so much you know and if you because it's jesus saved me from my sins whoever calls on the name lord shall be saved so so, and if you know Jesus and you're not sharing this gospel, you can be sent to the same place they are. Don't kid yourself. Guys, I love you so much. Peace.